Today, looking into the Word of the Lord in 2 Timothy, the third chapter. Um, the first verse. Here, to look into the Word of God with me today. And it says from 2 Timothy, the third chapter. In the first verse, and this is addressing what we're facing or what they would face in the last days. And they even believed that they were in the last days then, but how much more are we in the last days? Verse 1 of 2 Timothy 3, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce. We see a fierceness in people that today, don't we? Despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. From such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers' lust, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Jan- uh, Janus and Jambres which steward Moses, so do these also resist the truth Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith, but they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men as theirs was also. But here he's saying, But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, and at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer Persecution, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned has been, and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And you can just go on and on. And from that, from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Brother Mike Carey, would you take us to the Lord in prayer this morning? Amen. So I want to encourage God's people today. As 
I feel on my heart that I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. And if I fail, because if there is any failure, it's not on God's part. But under the blood, we can find forgiveness. We can get through the things that we need to by the Spirit of God through the infilling, indwelling, empowering of the Holy Ghost. And that's what I want to preach. What we need to overcome what we face. I want to entitle this message, What We Need to Face What We Face. We need a fresh anointing touch of the Holy Ghost in our life every day. We need the fellowship of God's people in the assembly of the congregation of the people of God. We need prayer one for another as well as ourselves. We need the constant reading of the Word of God and the infilling of God's Spirit of fresh and anew, being renewed in the Holy Ghost. We are saved by the washing of regeneration and renewing in the Holy Ghost, of the Holy Ghost, as the Word lets us know that we've got to have that renewing. We've got to get self out of the way through prayer and bringing ourselves into submission and subjection to the power of the infilling of God's Spirit, structured in our life by the Word of God that is shed abroad in our heart. And the world is going to continuously get worse. As I read a very long passage of Scripture that is not my normal that I do, but I wanted to touch on things that are in the Word of God that people would hear this Word wherever they might hear as in this congregation and other people that hear the recorded preaching that I do. But I'm just telling God's people everywhere If we've ever got a hold of God, if we've ever taken a hold of God in His Word, if we've ever embraced the church, if we've ever gotten in connection with strength that God has provided for these numerous ways that I have called out this morning, we must have this today. We've got to have the strength of God in a world that's getting worse and worse. So many facets, so many ways that the world is deviating from God and they're trying to pull us along with them. They're not comfortable just to be a few that would be in leading people as themselves are leading their own selves astray. Walking away from truth. Walking away from strength and power in God. Walking away from the things that are deemed to be right and holy and pure before God. That's what this world is doing today. And they want everybody to follow the leader. And that is to follow them away But they're really following not just themselves. They are following the leadership of satanic power. And every demon spirit that comes under the power and authority of Satan in his domain. And he wants every living soul under his domain. Jesus is reaching for the world, but Satan is reaching also. And he's having a lot of success in leading people 
astray from the truth of God's Word, and some of them have never known the truth. And some have, and some have turned back. And the soul that turns back, God said, his soul shall have no pleasure in him. So backsliders need to know the mercy of God that he will restore if people will turn before they burn. If we ever today the church needs to be stalwart in our stand for the Lord and our example that we would live as Christ lives in us we would be a living, shining, exposed example to an ungodly, unrighteous world. We need to be everything that God wants us to be. While the world is at its worst, we need to be the church at its best. But we're living in perilous times, and the dangers also can be something that influences us, something that can get a hold of us if we do not stay where we belong in God. If we've ever prayed, if we've ever sought God, if we've ever had Bible and revival as a church, We need to have that, not only here in Wascombe, but everywhere the truth is named across this vast globe that we call the earth. The world that we live in, we need today, we need a revival of God's power of God's direction in our life, of God's protection. We need a revival of having the want to to live for God. We've got to have that want to to live for God, and it comes to the indwelling of God's Spirit. It's one thing to know that we need to, but it takes The power of God empowering us, giving us that desire to live for the Lord, to want to stay when others are going, to remain when others are being castaways from the Lord. This world is wicked and evil. I read a host of things that the world has. And even some things the church, some people associated with in the church, having a form of godliness and denying the power thereof. They deny this power. They deny it in allowing it to live in them and through them, empowering them to be victors over a world that the devil wants you to be a victim of. So I'm saying today to the church, if we've ever realized what we have in the Lord, how we can stand when the world is folding and crumbling and stumbling and mumbling and grumbling and all the things it's doing, the church can and will The true church can and it will survive. It will do more than survive. It will thrive. And there is a pressure on us today that we must not resist, we must not uh, give in to, we must resist it with all that God is in us. And with our willpower, it's one thing to have the power of God. I've got this device here known as a telephone, and I don't preach from it. A lot of our ministers 
got to where they're doing everything off of a telephone. I still believe in opening up this black back book and preaching straight out of the Word of God. It may not matter, but I'll tell you more than just having the Word of God on paper, we better have it in our head, in our mind. We need to study to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We need it in our head. They may take our Bible. They may take our phone that may have the Bible. They may stop allowing the Bible to be on the Internet for your phone. But we need the Word of God hidden in the heart of our mind and exposed when the time and the need arises for the Word of God to come forth. There's a world that needs to know this. They, we need to be at a place if we were in prison for what we believe, what we live, and what we do in God. If we were in prison and they took our Bible away, we need to have enough Word of God in our head that we can continue to go on, we could preach on, we could testify on, we could witness on, we could convert people to God on because we have the Word of God shared abroad and not a narrow in our heart. We need the Word of God shared abroad in our heart. We need a love for it while the world is stumbling and grumbling and mumbling while the world is getting worse and worse. The church needs to get stronger and stronger. Traitors, heady-minded, all these things, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce. This is a fierce world today. They, this world, so many people in this world today is having to go to anger management because they can't control their anger. That's it. That's it. They need a God deliverance. They, I want to tell you, there are spirits of obsession, oppression, and possession that are demonic spirits that take a hold of people after people yield to those spirits that are seducing and reducing spirits and people yield to that sin long enough, then Satan has a legal right to demon-possess those people through other fallen angels. Satan can't inhabit all of them. But there's millions and millions, undoubtedly. We don't know how many Numbers there are of the one-third of the angels that fell from heaven. Many are reserved in chains of darkness to the day of judgment, but many are loose and they are subverting, diverting, perverting, and even reverting people of God that fall into weakness and fail to realize the danger that is in this world and this life that we live where people are astray from God. I read a host of things about people, and because of the various mindsets and ideas that people have, it makes them vulnerable to demon, obsession, oppression, and ultimately possession. And you're going to see more demon-possessed people than we've ever seen before in our lives. We're going to see more and more. And as Satan realizes his time is short, he realizes he's got to do everything that he can. And I believe he's got the demons incorporated because he is their leader. He is the orchestrator of what they 
do. And he knows his time is short, Brother Mark. And he's got them involved. He's got them dispatched. He's got them engaged. And what is the church doing? Sleeping. The church of God, many are asleep today. That means they are inactive. Spiritually, they may be asleep. Spiritually, they are disengaged, and that's what the Lord says. They are asleep in. There's inactivity. There's not prayer. There's not fasting. There's not Bible reading. There's not church attendance. There's not church outreach like it should be because the people are caught up with the things of this world instead of God's world. That is backslid. That is actually backslid. When you look at the seven churches that's mentioned in the book of Revelation, the first part of Revelation, chapters 2 and 3 and all, it's listed there of seven churches of Asia way back. The problem is today, the problems that are today were what they were like then, but only worse for our day. Because evil men and seducers are going to wax worse and worse. But of the seven churches that Jesus addressed, only two of them was, were in a place where they were okay. But never should we feel satisfied at any spiritual level that we're in. We need to realize the only way that we're going to remain what we need to be is we got to be growing and going with God and His Word, doing His work, being who we're supposed to be, and helping somebody else to be who they are supposed to be in the Lord. This is our commission. This is our mission, the Great Commission. This is what we got to do while the world is at its worst. The church has got to be at its best. And I'm preaching what I feel a burden on my heart for. And it's when the church gets a burden and it begins to reach out that people will come into the church. And the church is more than this building. They need to come into this building but they need to come into the fold of God through the born-again experience. You're not joining in. You're born in of the water and of the Spirit. After repenting and being born of the water and the Spirit, receiving the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongue as God gives the utterance, that's been from the beginning of the outpouring of God's Spirit that people speak in other tongue as the Spirit of God gives the utterance. They've got to be baptized in Jesus' name, not titles. The proper name has got to be said somewhere in the beginning of that baptismal formula that we say upon the confession of your faith and obedience to the Word of God. I now baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission, for the cleansing, for the forgiveness and the cleansing, the forgiveness and the cleansing of your sin. After that you have firstly repented all those sins and then they're washed away by the power of the name of Jesus that invokes the blood and it commingles the blood with the water like if you study about the commingling of the blood and the water in the Old Testament. It's brought to reality 
in the New Testament. This is the New Testament plan of salvation. Repentance of our sins, baptism in Jesus' name for the remission or the doing away with those sins and receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost for the evidence of speaking in another language as the Spirit of God gives the utterance. We find this Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 8, Acts chapter 10, Acts chapter 19. How many more illustrations would anybody need to have? But God has given us those. That's enough. In the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. That's what the Word tells us. And God has always given us two or three witnesses of things or more. But at least in two or three witnesses, He wants everything to be established. So I'm telling the church, when you read this profile of what I have read to us today out of Second Timothy chapter number 3, starting with verse number 1, through where out I read there in verse number 13, where it says, But evil men and seducers, shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. So what I'm saying, this world is getting more and more wicked, so they're becoming more and more blind at every level and stage of wickedness that they're progressively digressing to. So I'm encouraging God's people, look and see what the world is, and that's the opposite of God wanting us to be. And so we got to be a good example of what God wants us to be so that the world can see what we contrast with them in and they can see and know what we need to be and what we are and what they need to be by the example of God's Word. God's people being a living epistle, read of men, so that they can see a demonstration. People would rather see a sermon before they hear a sermon. But if they hear a sermon from somebody that's being a sermon, whether it's from the pulpit or whether it's from somebody and anybody walking on the street proclaiming God's Word, telling the world what they need in the Holy Ghost, being just a witness. We're all preachers by the life we live and by the words that we say, and we can all tell people how they need to be born again. And, and, and it's no, tell, no need in telling them all these things that they need to be in living for God after they get the Holy Ghost, they got to get the Holy Ghost first, and then they'll be open and receptive to, receptive to become. But we can tell them what they are, and God will destroy them for being who they are and not what He is. But we got to reach them with love. It takes a lot of love. You can't condemn this world. You got to love them in the truth. You got to convince them with the unction and functioning of the Holy Ghost for them to see and to know and to understand and have revelation that will bring revolution to their life. That's what it takes. God, if we've ever prayed, <laughs> Give us a burden. That's another message in itself. Praying for a burden to be born. A burden's not just picked up. It's something that's born within the heart. And that's what will make us go and tell. The gospel, first two letters of gospel is go. Go with the gospel. 
So I'm coming to a close now today. I'm just telling us, church, there's a world out there. It's going to take a Holy Ghost experience in our life. God in us, working through us, and living the life of holiness and godliness through us to ever touch a world that is blinded and deceived and enslaved in sin. It's going to really take something in God to wake up a world, to open up their eyes, and they are going to have to see what they are and what God wants us to be and have a desire to change. If we've ever prayed, God, bring a spirit of change of mind on this darkened, deceived, and being destroyed lives of this world that know not God. They need to be saved. God, where would we be if we hadn't had a conversion in you? Where would we be today? How far would we be down that road of sin and destruction. Whereas we're on the road of God construction and reconstruction. Transformation in God is what's happening in our lives. How He's changed us. And if he could do it for us, he can do it for others. Some people might have grown up religious. Some of us, I had a little bit, but it was in some doctrine that was of error. And I got to a point that I just got so bad that I was demon-possessed and had to have demons cast out of me. But I'm just telling the church today, there's a lot of demon possessed out there, and they're so blinded that without God, they'll never see the light of truth without the revelation of God's Spirit. But God can do it for them as He's done it for us. Can we stand today? That's right. That is right. Thanks for the amen. Because... He said, that is right. And I said that. Can we stand today and realize God wants to do a delivering act in the life of many people today? And it's us that knows the truth that can proclaim this truth, that we can pr pray deliverance for people. If we've ever prayed just a general prayer, God we're praying for deliverance for those that will be heirs of salvation if they get your deliverance. we got to pray for that deliverance. We may have to put hands on them and anoint them and uh, rebuke demons out of them as we've done. We've spent a lot of nights and years gone by, and some of those people are gone on now and they're not here. But somehow the ministry must never die. We must continue to live to see people delivered at an altar or on a pew or on a floor. I've seen people vomiting out devils on carpet on linoleum. It was full of demon spirits. I know what it is to do that. When I first got in church, January 13th, 1970. For a long time ago. I know what it was to curse people. I know what it was to come close to shooting people and blowing their guts out. I know a lot of things of evil that I've done. And it makes me to know what I was, that people are as bad or worse. Some not, maybe not as bad, but some are worse. People need deliverance today. And we're the ones that can do it. We're the ones that 
can do it. How many devils are you, are you hearing cast out in many of these other denominal churches? How many people are really getting God deliverance and are walking away from sin and staying free and clean of that sin? But many today are so-called going through the motion of it and they're going back to those sins and they're going back to the weak and beggarly things or going back to those things, uh, chains of bondage. They're going back to the slavery of the things that once enslaved them. They're returning like the dog, as the Bible says, to its own vomit. That's sad. That you, religious is not enough. you got to be religious and God, Holy Ghost, filled spiritual to survive this wicked world we live in today. If you don't remember anything else I say, you got to remember that. Whoever hears what I have preached today, you got to stay delivered. You got to be Holy Ghost filled if you're going to be delivered and stay delivered. You got to stay filled with God's Spirit. You're going to be filled. And I, a man told us this many years ago. He said, you'll see it. Brother T.W. Barnes told me personally, he said, Brother Gully, you're a young man. You're a young man. And I'm an old man. But you're going to see it, and I won't see it in my day, but you'll see it in your day. You'll see it a day that everything that is not filled with the Holy Ghost is going to be filled with demon spirits. And the more that I've lived years beyond that, I've, I'm seeing it come into pass more than ever before. Let us pray. Choose you this day whom you're going to serve, whether it be God or mammon. The world system and the devil that's over the world system, you got to choose whether you're going to serve Jesus Christ or the devil in the world system that he's orchestrating and de demonstrating instead of, let's emphasize it, demonstrating. Demonstrating, demonstrating. It's how you pronounce it. Let us pray today. God, we thank you for this service. Thank you for all that you've done, all that you're going to do. We pray your hand of blessing and anointing and empowering upon us to a greater degree than we've ever been empowered by the Holy Ghost. Fill us with your mighty power to overflowing. Give us a mindset like never before to live for you to stay true to the Word, to be a witness of the Word, the example of the Word as you would have us to be. God, help us to see revival in this country, a nation turning to you, God, that as many has turned away. But we pray for people to not only come back and be restored to you, but to continue on to the end of their life living for you, Lord. We just pray you would give us, Lord, favor with the people. God, let the word of your Spirit have free course as it goes from forth from our mouth and as it's preached from, from the written word. Give us revival for the church and harvest for the souls of the lost, we pray. Keep your hand of protection on us. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. You're dismissed in Jesus' name this morning. Be friendly and shake hands with one another.